So hi everyone, my name is Christian Hugerhide. I'm a data solutions architect with Socrata, and Jason Dooley from NASA was just taking us through some of the greater resources that NASA has made available for the Space Apps Challenge and beyond that. Um, I'd like to take you through again to data.nasa.gov and to dive into one specific data set that's hosted right here on data.nasa.gov to see what we could do with it and then to explain a little bit about the APIs we've made available for this weekend's hackathon. So as Jason mentioned, We've highlighted the Space Apps Challenge data sets right here on the home page. I'm going to click into that so that we can get a master listing of the data sets we have found relevant for this weekend and a couple we think will just be helpful um, for people who are exploring throughout the weekend. You know, as Jason mentioned, all of this stuff is searchable and sortable by category and by type. You can also search in the search bar right up here on top, but I'm actually going to scroll all the way to the bottom to a data set about meteorite landings so that we can see what we can do with data that's hosted right here on the platform. So I'll click into that. And we're taken to an interactive data set view, a spreadsheet view as Jason called it, so that users who are interested in learning, seeing a preview of the data uh, right here on the site can do so. So I'm looking at a data set of meteorite landings that have happened since the 1700s. Each record here is one meteorite that struck the Earth uh, in some place. We have a variety of columns about their, uh, their name, their mass, the, whether they were fall, fallen or observed, uh, the year that they were observed, and so on. And now that data is here on the platform, there's a couple things that we can do with it. First of all, I strongly encourage everyone to always explore the, a data set's a metadata before doing anything else, because this will give you some helpful background and some helpful information about what's actually posted here in the data set. After that, if you want to, we have about 35,000 records right here on the data set, but if you want to filter or slice that down just a little bit more, you can click on the blue filter tab up above and uh, sort this data down, chop it down into something that's a little bit more usable. So in the anticipation of us building a very simple visualization, uh, let me just sort the data that we have here so that we can build an eventual uh, column chart of meteorite landings by their mass. So let's say we wanted to sort these by mass, and I'm gonna do descending. I'll apply that. Great, our data has been sorted. We can now build a very simple and quick visualization with just a couple of clicks. Let's build a column chart. On the x-axis, we'll put the name of the meteorite, and on the y-axis, I'll put the mass. Great, it generated, let me just X this out over here. And we have now an interactive visualization of meteorite landings and their relative mass right here. Now that this is here, there's a couple things I'd like to highlight. The first is that this, although I won't save it right now, if I were to save this visualization, a, a small snippet of code would generate right here and I could take that and plug that into a blog I have or into a news article I'm writing or anywhere that I would like to share an interesting visualization I've just created. And of course, those of you who understand web development will recognize that the data, the visualization that I create uh, will be interactive wherever I've posted it. So we want to get this data out there. We want to get it shown and used all across the web. So plugging this into your blog will create a real-time connection between the data set or the visualization that you've just embedded on your blog, for example, and the, the, the data that's updated right here on data.nasa.gov. Next thing is the ability to export this data. Those of us who like working with data, like myself, know that sometimes we just want to get the data off the platform to do our own munging or our own exploration of it. Um, of course, data.nasa.gov allows us to download the data in a variety of formats that you can see here, or to call the data using an API that Jason mentioned before. So if you're an app developer or if you're a researcher who wants to real-time call this data using your own custom-built applications, well, you can take this little API endpoint right here, plug it into your application, and call this data as it's updated. Additionally, I won't save this visualization, but I just clicked API Docs. The platform generates, auto-generates a set of helpful documentation so that as you build your application or as you're hacking on something for the weekend, you can get started very quickly. 
So the platform has provided us, us with a couple of helpful resources. Number one, uh, NASA and I would strongly encourage you to register for an app token so that we can understand usage of different data sets and so that we can better serve the data sets that are highly used and uh, people are very interested in. Not to mention the fact that the platform right now will allow you to anonymously, anonymously make API calls, but we will eventually limit you if you're making over a thousand calls an hour. So if you want to make an unlimited number of calls to escape that throttling limit, I would encourage you to sign up for an app token right here on the site. Beyond that, the, this documentation provides some helpful information on each column in the data set, so that if you want to filter or query the data according to specific columns or to filter it down with different parameters, it will suggest some code on how to do that. It will even provide you with the ability to, if I click on this, this live API example right there, the ability to query the API live in my URL, in my uh, my browser bar. So you can see I just ran a very simple query on a specific uh, meteorite name. I can do that right here on the fly. And as you scan down, you'll see the different data types, the different ways of querying each column in the data set. So I was strongly, in closing, I would just highly encourage everyone to check out data.nasa.gov to build your applications on top of what we have here, to suggest different data sets or provide feedback on what we have here because this is a continually growing catalog of publicly available NASA data. And to use this data, if at all possible, for your weekend challenges because at the end of the weekend, we will be putting out a, well, we will be awarding um, something for those who make the best use of the data right here on the platform. So thank you very much. I really appreciate your time and good luck hacking.